Well, another big SEC weekend. Uh, two teams that are borderline top ten in the country, so uh, should be a great environment. Hopefully we are uh, having a packed house all weekend, and hopefully we play great baseball uh, for our fans. So happy to answer some questions. Mark, I think it's been a popular question throughout the season. How do you pitch to Charlie Condon? Uh, you throw the ball to the backstop and make sure he doesn't steal second base. How about that? <laughs> Coach, uh, talk a little about what uh, Garrett Ganey has meant to you guys this year and how has he improved since he came on campus? Yeah, he's improved in all kinds of ways. Um, I think both physically in terms of his mechanics are as good as they've ever been, which has led to better velocity and on more control. Uh, he's learned that over the course of the year, early in the season, he was just overpowering people. And then he, he got into the league and realized he couldn't do that. So he's had to make an, an adjustment to that. And he's become more of a pitcher as of late. And he's mixing his pitches much more than he, he was early in the season. So I've, I've seen him evolve there. His velocity's uh, up from where it's been in the past. And I think from a maturity standpoint, you know, he's, he's kind of like a wild bull at times where you've got to kind of try to teach him to, how to harness it properly. Um, but you also don't want to take away his emotion and his passion. And you never want to do that as a coach. But I think as, as a coach, you can also teach him how to really harness it and, and help him to use it to his advantage. So I think he's improved in, in a lot of different ways. Do you have a weekend rotation plan set yet? We'll go Kimball, uh, Jones, TBA. Mark, some talk going around. I know you wouldn't talk to the kids about it, but you guys maybe could get your way into a national seat through this end-of-season stretch. Do you, like, have a checklist of things like, well, you know, this is what we need to do, or do you even look at that uh, as you're preparing for these weekends? I mean, as a coach, you, you look at everything possible, but talking about it, you know, belaboring the point brings no value. Uh, the only value that, that a team needs is how to prepare for the next game. Uh, and you try to win that game. And then if you do that enough, then those things take care of themselves. They become byproducts. You can't say, I want this or I want that. It doesn't make those things happen. Winning games and then reverse engineering how to win games on that day, that's what gets you where you want to go. Hey, Mark, it seems like Messina's has really been swinging the bat well lately. What have you seen from him at the plate and his at-bats that looks, uh, looks different in his success right now? And then what are you seeing from him behind the plate defensively? Well, behind the plate defensively, he's been regarded as one of the best in the country all year, and I think that's warranted. He's done a great job of, of uh, when he gets a chance of controlling the running game, he does a great job with, uh, you know, pitch framing um, when, when there are borderline pitches. And then offensively, I think his mechanics are just in a really good spot right now. I think he really has locked into where he needs to be and what his thought process needs to be, which leads to the right physical mechanics. and. He's just in a really good spot right now, and hopefully that carries on through the, through the end of the season. I'm not trying to get too much of a scouting report out sure of you, not. but sure but with Condon, does he ever – does he get himself out, or are there ways for a pitching staff to get him out? Well, yeah, I'll give you all the secrets, John. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think when you hit 459 with 33 homers, an 1,100 slugging, and an almost 600 on base percentage – yeah, I don't think there's really any way to get him out. There's just not. So you've got to try to minimize his damage. You've got to try to do the best you can of, of limiting his impact on a game. And, and that's, that's really all you can do when a guy has those kinds of stats because those are the kind of stats that would make Barry Bonds blush. Um, it's incredible. Coach, you have about five transfers from this season in your lineup currently. Um, what, if, what's, what about this culture has really allowed them to thrive here or were they just that good coming in? Well, I think we recruited good players out of the portal, guys we thought would fit um, both on the field and in the locker room, and I think that's important. I think it's pretty well documented now that, that the culture we have right now is, is of hard working, but also we're going to allow you to have some freedom to be yourself and enjoy this process. So I, I think that's attractive to good players. They want to play in, in the SEC. They want to play at South Carolina. And then when they know that they're coming to a place that will be very accepting of them, and, and welcome them in if they can help them win games. You know, I think it makes for a, a good a good combination. So I just think it's a combination of, of good players that now feel very comfortable and are playing very well. With Georgia staff, they've kind of come on the last couple of weekends, Finley, Goldstein, those guys. Anything stick out in tape about Georgia's pitchers and what they're going to bring this weekend? 
I mean, it's just it's it's talented guys that are starting to kind of hit their groove. That's that's what it comes down to. All year they've been known as a premier offensive team, but uh, pitching wise, they obviously have made progress as the year's gone on. So I think it's a complete team. Mark, obviously you switched the lineup uh, recently, get more offense in for defense. How do you think those guys have handled their defensive roles in that new set? And we're fielding 975 um, since we since we kind of shuffled the infield around, which is more than acceptable for the amount of offense we're getting. So as I've said, it's like everything. There's always give and take. Um, but we made the decision that we needed to score more runs than we were. And if that means we had to take a step back defensively, we were willing to, to make that concession. Uh, and I think in the last eight, nine, ten games, we're averaging close to ten runs a game. So um, it's it's something we'll continue to do until we until we feel like we we can't. Austin Brindling has just seemed to impact the game so much offensively, defensively with that catch. The last three series, what did he do around the middle of April to give you the confidence to put him in the starting lineup? Um, and then how how proud are you when he goes in there and actually takes advantage of it? Yeah, very proud. I mean, because he handled the entire process with nothing but class. And so you love when guys that, that handle their business properly get rewarded by the game. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, he when he came here, we recruited him because he had really good stats. Um, he had a 500 on base percentage. He hit 386, I think it was last year. So that was a guy that we thought this could he could be what he's right now. But he came in with a little bit of a hitch in his swing. And it's something that he needed to fix. And, and him and our coaches worked very hard on that. And you could see in batting practice that it, it had been starting to get ironed out. And, uh, and then one day we had a live at bat session where pitchers that needed some innings and hitters that needed some at bats went out and they faced each other. Uh, and he was, I think it was six for seven that day. And it was just like, and, and I watched every pitch and I watched how he took the pitches and I watched his quality of contact. And like, this guy deserves a shot. I mean, we need a little spark. Maybe this guy will provide that spark. And he sure has. And so he's, you're really happy for him. The hitch is gone. The hitch is gone. gone. That yeah, no, the, the thing that was holding him back with hitting SEC caliber velocity, because he, he had a poor fall. He just did. But he made the adjustments. And that's what this game is. It's about adjustments. It's about improving minor flaws that may be holding you back. He's done that. And now he's playing extremely well. Yeah. With Garrett, uh, he had probably mediocre success as a starter. Um, but and his his thrived with you guys out of the bullpen. But you know, with maybe some things going on with your starting pitching, do you look at him as somebody who may be able to to start for you at some point, or even go in as an opener type? Yeah. Well, as you've seen, I'm not afraid to try different things to try to get us a, a little bit closer to where we could be 100% capacity, and that's been that's been jostled around a little bit in our coaching staff meetings. Is 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 do we need to find a different role, a better role for him? I think what you've seen with him is, is especially starting last week, is he, he, his outing was longer, much like a Ty Good coming out of the bullpen, almost as a, as a secondary starter, if you will. I think Ganey may uh, eventually grow into that. But we also, you know what, there, we may one game, and maybe it's in the postseason where we pull a Michael Roth out and just say, you're going to start your first game. And I know Michael's first start was in the College World Series. And, but that turned out pretty well. So I don't think you can ever be scared of trying something that your gut tells you might really help the team. And everything's always on the table. I know Condon's the talk of power hitters in college baseball, but what about Petri and the way he followed up his power from last year with the power this year? I think like over 40 homers in his two seasons. Yeah. This, what's your take on him and his, maybe his consistency? And knowing that pitchers are going to be more aware of him this year. Well, he's a special player. I don't think I'm, uh, I don't think I'm breaking any news by saying that he's a special player. But he's evolved over the course of this year. He's had some ups and downs this year. And I think he's learned a lot about what it's like to be the hunted instead of the hunter. Last year, nobody knew who he was. He didn't start opening day. And he just kind of exploded onto the scene this year. Everybody knew who he was, and so he's been pitched differently, and he's had to make some adjustments, and he's had to learn uh, against Arkansas, for example. He saw three, maybe three or four strikes all weekend, and, and he got impatient, and he chased outside the zone, and he had a tough weekend. Since that weekend, he's made adjustments. His strike zone discipline has been very, very good, and he's had great success. So I just think with young hitters like him, it's really important that they continue to learn what the game's going to do to them and then the adjustments they make back. 
And uh, so I think it's been a really fun process to watch that with him. Mark, I think five of your first six hitters in the order right now are hitting over 300. First off, just how important of a stat is that to you um, when you're kind of constructing your lineup and stuff? And are there any other stats you try to take into account when you're um, making your you know perfect lineup, I guess? Yeah, 300 is kind of the old-fashioned number of, hey, when a guy hits 300, you know he's a good hitter. And, and I still place value on that because it is hard to get hits, you know. And we've gone back and forth in the money wall era of, Batting average means nothing. It's all about on-base percentage. And then you have OPS. Then you have OPS plus. And there's a million different NASA stats that they have out there. Um, but I still think there is some value to just the 300 hitter because the ability to get hits is is hard. And when you face teams that throw strikes, on-base percentage tends to go down because you don't walk as much. So the ability to get hits can be important. So all that is to say that it's nice having 300 hitters you know, throughout our lineup. Um, but on base percentage still is important. Slugging percentage is still important. It's all still important. Batting, you know, batting average with runners in scoring position, getting runners in with a runner at third and less than two outs is important. What are your left right splits? Those are important. All those things are important. And at the end of the day, you want to have nine guys that feel like they all complement each other. Uh, we've gone to the right left right left right left, which I think has really helped us. And so, all those factors matter. Coach, after the Missouri series, you talked about the fight of this team. And then after the Winthrop win last night, you talked about the fun this team has. How does that fight and fun affect you and your coaching? Do you find yourself having more fight, more fun? Well, I think the more fun they have, the more fun I have. And it seems like the more fun and relaxed our guys have, the better they play. And I think from a, from a sports psychology standpoint, there's, there's some, some credibility behind that if, if you're relaxed. If you're focused and then you allow yourself to enjoy it, you tend to play better no matter what the sport is. So that's continue, That's going to continue to be our focus is compete your butts off, have a lot of fun, and let's see what happens. And I think the guys are really enjoying that. Kind of a big picture college baseball question. The, the conversation is back out there about eliminating scholarship limits on, on baseball. How, how does that impact the game from a, a parity standpoint, of recruiting standpoint? What are your general thoughts on whether you're for or against something like that? Well, I've always said I'm, I'm very much for baseball players getting more scholarships. Um, we have 11.7 for 40 guys. That's, that's unacceptable. It really is. It always has been and always will be if it doesn't change. So I am for baseball players getting treated like basketball, like football. Um, because we have 10,000 people out there. It's a revenue sport, especially in our league. So I think our baseball players put in a lot of time and effort. They bring in a lot of money to these schools. And so I think the scholarship standards for baseball players um, should be the same as those other sports, just my personal opinion. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mark.